that I really love called Driving on the Rim by Thomas McGuane. He's a Montana writer, and this is a Montana book, and it's fantastic. And I'll tell you about it in a second. But first, I'll tell you how I came to know about it and show you another book. Um, this is The King of Kings County by Whitney Terrell, who is a writer that I've known forever. Um, Kings County is a fictional county, um, but its initials are KC. Whitney is from Kansas City, and I think uh, it's no coincidence that Kings County also starts with KC. Um, he, Whitney actually runs the MFA program at the University of Missouri at Kansas City. Super smart guy, super smart writer. He does father-son um, nuanced relationship beautifully in this book. Um, his first novel, The Huntsman, handled um, an unusual father-daughter relationship um, with real skill, and I really admire him as a writer. Um, he knew I was working on a novel based in Montana and recommended to me that I check out Thomas McGuane, which I did. And Driving on the Rim is a really great one. Um, this story is about a young man with quirky parents. They've named him I.B. Pickett, Irving Berlin Pickett, in fact. Um, the mother is extremely religious, fundamentalist, really absorbed by um, her behavior uh, with the church. And the father is primarily absent because he's um, almost never come back from the war uh, mentally. Um, the way Burl is raised is um, maybe neglectful at best, and the town's local doctor sort of takes him in and actually raises him and encourages him to pursue becoming a doctor himself, which he does. So he's gone away and then returned to practice medicine in his small town. And a couple of uh, terrible things uh, befall him in his medical practice, two deaths that he has to deal with, uh, one of which he's accused of and another um, he feels guilty for. And the book is about him un uh, sorting out, untangling, his involvement in these in these things. Um, at the same time, he's balancing his, his the difficulties of the return to his small town, what the town and his family's expectations are of him, and a new love interest that may or may not be good for him, but is certainly intriguing as you read about it, um, with this flaming red-haired um, ag pilot. Anyway, I won't give anything away from that. But I wanted to read you um, one line in particular, a couple things. Um, first, just a quick blurb from the back. This is actually for one of his other titles, but I love the line. McGuane has a keen eye for vul the vulgarities of contemporary American life and a sharp pen upon which to impale them. That was Jonathan Yardley in the Washington Post. Um, this book came out in 2010. It could easily have come out in 1965, 1979, 1998. Um, he writes of the moment, but I would also say his stuff is universal and timeless, which not every writer can do, and boy, he does. So let me see if I can find this one fabulous line, because it's the kind of thing that a writer specifically, I think, really um, sees and admires. Um, okay, I found it. So this is the part where um, Burl is talking to Dr. Olson, who is sort of his surrogate father, about the fact that, that um, Burl's mother really does need uh, inpatient psychiatric help. And Burl says, because of her religion... And the doctor says, I don't know because of what. I only know that health and human services won't allow her to do what she does much longer without stepping in. Now here's the line. It takes up half a line of text, which I would love to just show you if I can show you. Look at that. It's half a line. And he says, well, McGuane says to the reader that uh, through the voice of Burl, I was growing up fast, and now we have dialogue. What can we do? The reader is given, is delivered this uh, very clear clue that Burl is grown up. He sees what's going on. He's aware of it. We are all on the same page with him. He's grown up fast. He sees what his mother's um, idiosyncrasies and difficulties are. And then he's dealing with it. Line of dialogue. What can we do? It's a remarkable um, sort of gymnastic feat with um, language and something I really admired. 
There was one other quick thing I wanted to read. Um, at the very back of the book, it's in like the last ten pages, when um, Burl is cruising around near his hometown, and he um, ends up passing through the Hutterite colony near Martinsdale, and then he gets to a very small town called Checkerboard. And that's what I'm looking for now. Okay. Um, when I reached Checkerboard, I spotted the bar among a number of trailers. The sign just said bar. If it had said Excelsior Tavern or something, I wouldn't have stopped. I was alone with the bartender under a low ceiling covered with dollar bills. Not much light in there. A jukebox. I drank a shell of draft without a word from the bartender and left. The reason I marked that is it's a great example of how real McGuane's writing is. And I know it's real because I've been in that bar and I have photos of that bar's ceiling with the dollar bills on the top. Um, whenever you can zoom yourself into a fictional setting when you realize it's in fact not fiction, he's drawing from life in parts of it um, very clearly, that's a really fun experience as a reader, and this book was loaded with that. I don't think just because um, that's the, the part of Montana that I, that I like to visit, but um, I think that Thomas McGuane's writing is really worth checking out. Uh, word of mouth, I like to tell where I got a book, but I like to also say sort of where I went with it. And I wanted to just mention that a friend of mine uh, named Liz, who is a retired art teacher, she is British... French. She was, her husband was French. She is now Swiss as well. Um, she's Catholic, very conservative, but also pretty quirky and liberal in her art teacher ways. She loved this book. She fell in love with it, absolutely. And um, it brings up the point that you never know what uh, connection your fiction is going to make with readers. And I didn't necessarily expect that one when I recommended it to Liz, but uh, boy, it made my day that she liked it so much. And uh, I recommend this book to you, too. Thanks for reading. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.